Well, good morning, Leeds United fans. I hope you're all doing fantastically well. It is Mother's Day. I hope you're all doing really well. All the wonderful mothers out there, uh, including my own, of course. And uh, we're back here with another video. A very chipper. Connor, as you can probably tell, a very uh, euphoric Connor after the weekend, I have to say, as I just turned my engine off. Um, Leeds United second in the pile after a really, really good Saturday for the Whites. Leicester being held to a draw. Southampton obviously getting that win over Sunderland, but through a few trials and tribulations for that one. And obviously the big talking point of the weekend, Ipswich losing out to Cardiff City, the hilarity of their social media guy already having their goals produced when it comes to graphics and the full-time image already produced when it comes to graphics made me laugh quite a lot to be honest with you. The expectation that Ipswich had to win that game was was confidence of course, maybe a touch of arrogance but, but to be fair, working in social media myself you do always have to be prepared for the best and the worst of football. So listen, Leeds getting the win on Friday night was more sort of important than probably we think there. You know, uh, uh, Sheffield Wednesday side, it would have been very good. Four wins on the bounce at Hillsborough, five wins in six. Leeds going there, not performing at our best in the first half, but still nicking a 1-0 lead on the touch of half-time, which we haven't done a lot this season. We've not really played really, really poorly, which I thought we were in that first half. Very similar to that of Huddersfield Town away from home and nicking a goal right at the end of the half just to completely negate any pressure, any fanfare where the Sheffield Wednesday fans were bouncing a little bit in the first half, bless them. But Leeds were able to do that and Leeds were able to nullify any sort of hope and expectation they had going into that that first half with, with, with any sort of positivity. Danny Roll did a fantastic job, I thought, in that first half against Leeds United. I thought his management was very good. I was able to bring... Sheffield Wednesday into a compact mid-block but deal with Leeds in the way he did with three very, very ageing midfielders. Three midfielders, Marvin Johnson, who is a left wing back, Palmer in there, who's about 38 years of age and is notoriously a right back and obviously Barry Bannon being the almost sweeper of those three. But the important thing there was that they're, all of that age group uh, are experienced vets but at the same time, they shouldn't have really, in terms of calibre and quality-wise, been able to deal with Leeds in that middle at all. And when I'm talking about the middle, I'm talking Rutter, I'm talking Grove, I'm talking Kamara. But they did, and that's credit to Danny Roll. That mid to low block really, really worked for them. But it wasn't really a low block in, it, in, in, in its fullest sense because they were high-pressing leads. But the beautiful thing about that is we had an intelligent brain at the back who thought to himself, well, actually, if they're pressing high... What I'm going to do is get the ball and with my pinpoint accuracy, with my sniper accuracy, I'm going to play the ball over the top because they're playing a really high line with sluggish slash slow defenders. So thank you to Ethan Ampadu for using that football brain you have and that is why you are my captain going forward with all respect to Liam Cooper after he moves on from the club. But Ethan Ampadu was imperious, he was superb during that game. He was almost mesmeric in terms of not only a defensive performance but a midfield performance as well. And I want to shout out Ethan because I've given him flowers but I want to keep giving him those flowers like I'm giving my mum flowers on Mother's Day. Sorry mum, I've let the cat out of the bag already. But yeah, top performance from Leeds and we went into the weekend a little bit like, well, we'll see what happens. Let's see what happens. And the job that was done by Cardiff City was that of Football League uh, EFL folklore. 1-0 down Kiefer Moore scoring again for Ipswich. I think that's his seventh goal since he's joined in January. Bearing in mind, on the One Leeds fan channel, he was one of our first names. So I want a bit of credit for that. Got batted for suggesting him. <laughs> he's too old. He wouldn't do it if he came to Leeds. But yeah, I think he scored his seventh goal. Um, yeah, and he's been a revelation of a signing for Ipswich. And I think in, in the games where they're, they've not been able to break opposition teams down, where they didn't really have, I thought, that, that option in George Hurst. I know he's a similar profile to Kiefer Moore, big lad, target man. But I feel Kiefer Moore brings so much more there. So many more of the intangibles, things that we can't really measure, but so many things that are able to get Ipswich up the pitch. And with the small diminutive players, Sami Ento, obviously Amari Hutchinson, who got player of the month, they're able to get in and around Kiefer Moore. And, and win those second balls. And that's extremely similar, extremely similar to what Leeds were doing on Friday night with Patrick Bamford. You know, we're getting in the round of in that second half, winning the second balls, but Kiefer Moore has given Ipswich that different dimension because they controlled games. They always controlled games. 
but that man that they had to hit, the front man, who was able to win the ball and able to get them out of situations, you know, in games when they've not been playing well and he knocks the ball into the box, the, the ball's knocked into the box and he wins a header and wins them the game or, you know, there's a deflection or he's a he's a big shooter is key for more. He shoots on, on target, really. He shoots any time he's got that availability to have a strike, he'll have a strike on goal and that's something I've criticised this Leeds side for too many times, you know, just... just playing about a little bit too much but the reason I'm talking about Keith Moore is he's given Ipswich a little bit of a dimension I think that's him coming in Simon Enter coming in obviously and Amari Hutchinson's form been you know getting better and better he's given him a little bit of a different dimension and I feel like we've almost had that similar thing you know we've had Grove in there we've had Kamara we've had a different junior Furpo who's come back into the fold and Padu's gone at the back and I think Maybe we've we've seen a little bit of a difference in Leeds United's form, but I'm not 100% sure that's the reason, you know, I, I don't think Pascal being out would have caused any difference there. I think him coming in would have been, I think we'd have still had the same run of form, to be honest with you. Um, but it's been so interesting to see that dynamic of Yol Perot coming out and Pat Bamford coming in. So, listen, overall, you've seen a different Ipswich, but you've seen a different Leeds United in 2024 as well. But I think you can even get a better Leeds United. I mean, what I was looking at on FB Ref earlier on, which is like a bit of an analytics site, I also backed this up by looking at Sofa Score, link in the description via One Leeds, everybody, you can check that one out, was how many progressive carries that Ethan Ampadu's having per game. And tactically, it's so interesting because I mentioned this after doing the watch wrong at the weekend uh, on Friday, and I thought this is what they're doing a little bit. You're actually getting Gruev substituting and covering Ethan Ampadu who's moving into the midfield now as I mentioned the other day I don't think that's a tactical move I think Ethan Ampadu's taken that upon himself because he's not seen any progressive carries from the likes of Gruev and Kamara Kamara a little bit more so I would say he's probably progressive carries are are half decent but it's that shot at the end of it which you know makes that that complete offensive action really in the progressive carry then the shot um but Ethan Ampadu has just been so good in terms of getting into that midfield spot and causing some problems for the opposition. He's, he's proven a bit of a, an attacking outlet for Leeds from centre-back, which I just think is absolutely out of this world. I want to shout Pat Bamford again as well for his performance the other night. I wanted Joseph to start, um, but I wasn't bothered if Pat started whatsoever. I just think Joseph would have been a little crisper, a little bit more zip, a little bit sharp, and I stick by that. Stand by that 100%. Um, you get in my opinion, um, a lot of sort of like dough ball responses of, oh, well, he's not played any minutes. Well, yeah, there was a point in time where Michael Owen played no minutes, then he came onto the scene looking crisp, sharp, and absolutely destroyed the Premier League. And I'm not saying that is going to be Matteo Joseph, but, you know, that, that means absolutely nothing. <laughs> I don't care if he's not had any minutes. He had no minutes before the Chelsea game, then he came in and did what he did. So that argument is completely redundant for me. Um, and I think he'd have done a job the other night with a very slow Sheffield Wednesday, Wednesday back line who were playing high. And Joseph always gets between the centre-back and the left-back as well and always plays on the shoulder. But also, so does Pat Bamford, who was excellent the other night, I have to say. Um, overall, we go into sort of Monday next week with a big rest now. Millwall coming up, we'll have content coming throughout the week, everybody. But Southampton getting that win, they are obviously grinding out those victories. You know, they have got that game in hand, which if they win that, I believe it'll take them to either 74 or 76 points. It is getting tight now. Leicester are completely bottling it at the minute. They are completely bottling it at the minute. And I'm not saying that they won't win the league. I'm not saying that they won't get that sort of resurgence back again. But Leicester are bottling it right now. From where we were, I think there was a, a stat not long ago in 2023, pretty much at the back end of 2023, we were something like 16 points behind him. It's down to three. That is bottling it so far. They've got to start having a bit of a resurgence in form. I think Leicester will, because I think they'll get back on top. I think, you know, they're too good not to get back on form. But I tell you what, right now they are struggling. They're struggling big time. And this is the worst moment to do it because you've got three hungry lions behind you. Southampton could win the league. Leeds could win the league and Ipswich could win the league. That is an ultimate bottle job. They cannot, listen, they can't fall out of that top two and, and not be in that top three to get promoted anyway. They've got the two leagues down the neck when it comes to financial fair play. And they need to go up. They've borrowed loans from banks. They need to go up. And is that pressure getting to them a little bit off the field? Is the noise off the field getting to Leicester a little bit? It's going to be fascinating to see because it seems like all the other three clubs have got a ruthless mission to win the league. And that's where I think Leeds are as well as Southampton and Ipswich. It is absolutely enthralling this race. It's horrible to be involved in, but it's great to be involved in as well if Leeds are to get you know win the league. 
or if Leeds had to even get promoted as part of that pack, what an achievement that will be from whence we were. And shout out to Daniel Farker, I have to say, for that. Um, but guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. How are you feeling after this weekend's results? I want some additional thoughts from you guys. Head on over to the Patreon if you want some bonus content. You can become a YouTube member. There's loads of you now. Shout out to all you. I think we're on about 250 members. It's not even been going that long. So shout out to all you guys. It's been an absolute pleasure. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in a bit.